We're the heroes of Pascal High, Ron Scott, Ken Ruth, Bob Colson, and our newest inductee, George Barlow. Thank you. We're here for the 50th Pascal High School reunion at Angelo's Barbecue. So we're going to eat some barbecue and drink some beer tonight. Come also, join us. We're also part of the Jackalope yeah. Patrol. And the Jackalope <laughs> Patrol, absolutely. <laughs> Bob, Ken, and I stayed at the fabulous Omni Hotel in downtown Fort Worth. My corner room offered a spectacular panorama of the skyline overlooking the Fort Worth Water Gardens. On Saturday morning, we gathered at the iconic Paris Coffee Shop on Magnolia for breakfast, after which Ken and I headed over to the beautiful Modern Art Museum to take in some culture. The main reunion event was held at the venerable Colonial Country Club, where arriving guests were greeted by a display of purple and white balloons and a classic Corvette. Once inside, classmates had to gather their badges and 50th reunion programs. Linda? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Hang on, Johnny. Okay. Put your name in it when you get over there and the lanyards are against the wall. Okay? Have fun. The reunion crowd filled up three big rooms at Colonial, where there was plenty of food and drink, and a band played throughout the evening, which encouraged quite a few to dance. Ended with everybody twisting the night away. Come on, baby, let's do the trick. Come on, baby, let's do the trick. Take me by the little hand and go like this. You should see. Just before I headed back to Houston, I enjoyed a stroll through the serene settings of the Fort Worth Water Gardens. All in all, it was a really great Pascal High School class of 1963, 50th Reunion Weekend. You may have wondered where we came up with the moniker, the Heroes of Pascal High. It was all born out of an incident that happened during our senior year over 50 years ago at Pascal. Back then, in order to pass senior English class, 
you had to memorize and recite 50 lines of poetry. Bob Colson and I had met this requirement, but by the last day of school, Ken Ruth had not. As we sat around the evening before that last day, it became obvious that there was no way Ken was going to be able to memorize 50 lines of poetry and recite it for the teacher the next day. So we devised a plan. The teacher's classroom where Ken would have to recite his lines of poetry was in one of those outbuildings we referred to as shacks. And as luck would have it, there was a window right behind the teacher's desk and the desk faced into the room. So we figured we could write the lines of poetry on large poster boards, making them ersatz cue cards that Ken could read. Since Bob was the artist of the bunch, he was tasked with creating the cue cards and holding them up outside the window. My job was to be inside the classroom to distract any others that might be there so that they would not notice and expose our little scam. There were two details that we had not thought about that almost derailed our plan. Since all the lines of poetry would not fit on one poster board, we needed a way for Ken to signal to Bob when to put up the next board. Ken was to scratch his head as if searching his brain for the next memorized lines. Bob would observe this and change the board. Although it was quite easy to see outside the window from inside the classroom, it was not so easy to see in from the outside. As Ken approached the end of the first board, he began to scratch his head. However, Bob could not see into the room very well, and he did not immediately switch boards. Ken kept scratching and scratching, and as I saw what was happening, I was sure that the teacher would catch on and we would be caught. But somehow Bob finally glimpsed Ken scratching and the boards got switched. The other thing we failed to realize was that these shacks had two classrooms and there was a full classroom of students next door. They started to notice what Bob was doing and I'm sure they figured out what was going on. But fortunately, they did not bust us. So Ken finished reciting his lines of poetry. The teacher gave him a passing grade. Ken graduated and went on to earn a degree in architecture from the University of Texas. Now our little caper might not qualify as full-blown heroism, but saving even one soul is heroic. And surely we saved Ken that day. Ergo, the heroes of Pascal High.